Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll start with the conceptual questions and then uh, move on from there. So um, this is the same deal as before. Um, <laughs> same deal as uh, well before um, few semester uh, uh, the before bef last couple weeks, and also last year when I did this with the ChatGPT. So uh, these are our conceptual questions. I've done this. Um, um, Last year with the ChatGPT, the free version 3.5, and I um, shared the, the, the playlist where that is. So we are continuing this uh, um, exercise of asking our conceptual questions to uh, not ChatGPT, but Perplexity, but same generative AI. I think it uses, uh, yeah, with the pro version. Huh, they renamed this to pro instead of copilot. Anyways, um. With the pro version, I think using GPT-4 as the response engine. So uh, let's uh, ask. Um, uh, these are all textbook questions. Oh, we'll see. I think the question number four. Um, I think ChatGPT didn't get that one right last time. But um, so yeah. So here, what I'm hoping to see is an answer based on coherence, coherence time or coherence length. We'll see. I think ChatGPT got that one right last time. You know, it's the first way, the fundamental of of nature, yeah. It depends on several things, yeah, coherence, that's the key factor. Uh, too small, so the unless one will not produce on the, the uh, because they I make mean, incoherent light, meaning, does it explain that are not in phase with each other over time? Yeah, not quite about in phase, but it's more about whether they are in a stable phase. So they could be out of phase, in phase, or somewhere in between. It's a question of are they, um, whatever their relationship is, is it stable over time? That's uh, uh, what's uh, important. Otherwise, that whatever uh, interference pattern there is at one moment in time gets washed away when you average it over time. The phase relationship, yeah, randomly and rapidly making it, yeah, stable is the key word here. Pretty good answer. Laser pointers. Now, um, so, it kind of depends. Um, two laser pointers, probably not, because you know even lasers are not all that stable. Um, but like it, this is more like a theoretical question. Like two different laser sources that you control very tightly. Uh, you can imagine uh, two tunable lasers in lab that are locked to a frequency comb, um, <laughs> something like that. Like in that um, really highly idealized setup, you could get stable interference pattern, but not with the two laser pointers, you probably won't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But coherence is like, yeah, other than it being a little bit long, this is good explanation. And the thing about laser pointers also not necessarily being um, necessarily in phase with each other, it, it's uh, um, fine. That's going into too much of a weeds of the things. Okay, monochromatic light. Um, yeah, what would happen if... Uh, so this uh, would be about uh, dependence on the wavelength of the interference pattern. Um, Monochromatic is clear and distinct waves of a single wavelength, right? Pure constructed, yeah. Um, you have to uh, use of uh, stable and observable uh, white uh, using white light. Okay, uh, multiple wavelengths, yeah. Uh, could have change it while well, I central white fringe, sure. Um, and then uh, the fringe will display colors, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in fact, you can kind of see this with uh, diffraction grading, which I think you will get to work with in this uh, next week's lab. Uh, the fringe close to the center would be violet, is that right? Uh, yeah, 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 shorter, shorter wavelength would uh, diffract less. So yeah, starting with the violet and then red at the farthest. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think that's right. You're like it's um, it, yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know. It depends. Um, think if you're thinking of places where you see constructive interference, like uh, with the diffraction grading, where you see really sharp constructive interference, then I think what they are describing is right. Yeah. 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 Washing out. Yeah. Um, like this is a kind of spatial kind of washing out. Um, above, I was talking about like a temporal washing out. Uh, 
yeah, I think this is good. Um, <laughs> how is the difference in path by to or regional in there? Okay. Um, so, what is the difference in path? Um, I wonder if uh, uh, Perplex will get that this is important in like a thin film interference kind of setup. We'll see. Um, like first part of the question doesn't matter, but the, where it starts talking about reflection, that's where thin film interference is more of a better setting to explain it in than double slit. Uh, in phase, crucial. Is there anything that's not crucial? <laughs> Central. Uh, of course, when path difference between is an integer multiple of wavelength, good. This condition leads to, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Destructive, yeah, half uh, integer, half. Um, and in reflection, yeah, can introduce, not, not necessarily always introduces a pi phase shift in one of the ways. Uh, yeah, yeah, if we reflect to for medium with a higher effect index than the one is traveling it, that's correct. At this point, you'll just have to memorize it as a rule. In upper division uh, electromagnetism, electrodynamics class or optics class, you would be able to drive this uh, either using Fresnel equation or just matching boundary conditions at the, uh, in, at the interface. Um, for this purpose of this class, just memorize it as a fact uh yeah invert the conditions yeah that that's right ish <laughs> refraction changes oh wait does it talk about that uh by refraction yeah changes the wavelength and speed of the waves yeah frequency remains the same i think the path the difference yeah path the difference in terms of the wavelength change of uh, can also interference better because conditions for yeah depends on the wavelength yeah reflective you know, yeah uh, optical, yeah, yeah. Optical path length would be one way to talk about the path length in terms of wavelength. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I, I think this is a good answer. Uh, now, optical path length. I don't think that phrase is in our textbook. That phrase not being in our textbook. I think. Let me do a search to confirm. Uh, if your answer heavily depends on that, I might wonder, hey, where did you get it from? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, if you are using generative AI ethically, meaning you are citing your sources, then it should be fine. <laughs> but if you are not using it ethically, yeah. Um, there are stuff that, like, I know this was mentioned in the textbook, but did you know it was mentioned in the textbook? <laughs> Uh, okay, this last question is uh, something I wrote, and uh, it's kind of, um, in some sense, an unfair question because it looks like a, like an open-ended question, then, and I'm looking for very specific kind of answer, and it's hard because I'm looking for very specific kind of wrong answer. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, it's uh, about how Newton's uh, theories on optics and Newton's theories on optics were not completely right. He was a proponent of corpuscular theory of light, which wasn't right, but he um, studied this phenomena and tried to explain it uh, based on something that's not quite the same thing as our uh, understanding of wave optics. So um, it's more of a historical trivia kind of answer. Yeah, positive light, okay. Challenge, yeah, you can do with nature, so interfere pattern. Um, credit uh, analyzing on different Newton's rings, okay. Um, between two surfaces. Um, slightly convex, yeah, it's a, so, you know, for this picture, it's actually two plain side of the two um, uh, lenses that's touching. So the that slight difference, that's like a fraction of a millimeter kind of difference that's resulting in this. Um, so did not rely on the way which would become. It fits in easy. Oh, wow. It, it's not fits in. I don't think a fit and stuff are here. So this is, yeah, yeah, this is great. Um, to account for the interference effect. Yeah, that's exactly what you should do. Uh, base your answer on. Uh, I wonder, let me just look at this link. Because uh, to find the reference for Fitz and um, the Newton's Fitz theory, it's uh, um, Fitz and start. Wow. 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 Um, 
So the only pl other place where I've seen this reference to fits and starts in, is in Feynman lectures. <laughs> um, yeah, optics, yeah, fits. Uh, yeah, wow, this is a great answer. I'm pretty sure this is not the level of detail and correctness that uh, ChatGPT had uh, last year. So, yeah, this is great. Um, just make sure you're citing it ethically if you use something like this. Yeah, yeah. so uh, those are the four questions. And yeah, um, uh, perplexed answer them well. And I, I don't really have anything to nitpick about. Other than that, these answers are so long. Um, but, um, I mean, yeah, as you can see in the model answer, a model answer can be written in like one or two paragraphs. They don't have to be an entire essay each time. <laughs> uh.